Hello and welcome guys. This is chapter 3 part 2. We discussed different security types. So just to recap, we saw what, how do you invest in banks? What are the options? Savings, check-in account, term deposit. Then we went to money markets. What do money market means? What is discounting? How instruments are issued at discounts? Money market is any investment that lasts for a period of less than a year. Then we went to fixed income markets, bonds and debentures, difference between bonds and debentures. How, what do you mean by coupon? What are different types of bonds? Then we went to equity. In equity, we saw what is preferred shares, what is common shares, and we are going to discuss derivatives now. Now, it's, it is one of the most fascinating topics that finance has to offer. So what is a derivative? Now to understand the concept, Imagine a product like curd that is made from milk. Okay. So product like curd that is made from milk. Now since curd is made from milk, we call curd as a derivative product. And we call milk as the underlying product. Now what is a derivative? Derivative is a product that depends, the price of which depends on the price of underlying. Derivative is a type of product in which the price of the derivative depends on price of the underlying. So if price of milk is going up, it will be more costlier to produce curd. So more often than not, price of curd will go up. If price of milk is going down, then it will be less costlier to produce curd and the producer may wish to uh, pass on the price change to the customer and the price of curd may go down. Okay, so derivative is any product which depends on another product called as the underlying for its price change. Now in finance world, we have many types actually but we are going to discuss forwards futures and options so forwards futures and options now what are forwards so imagine currently let's say i am in vancouver i am going to london for job purpose now, before going to London, I am shifting to London in the month of, let's say, June. And this is currently January. So, I, we are in the month of Jan. And we are going to shift to London in the month of June. Okay. Now, I need an apartment starting from June onwards. I do not need it right away in the month of Jan. But what I do... I go to London to visit my friend and just for safety purpose, so just for the peace of mind, I started, I start searching different apartments. Now what I come to know is there is a person, there is this lady Catherine who wants to rent out her place at $1200 in Canadian or US terms to me. Okay, she is renting her property at $1,200. Currently, it is occupied, but her property will get vacated by the month of June. I visit the property. I really like it. So what I do, I get into a contract with Catherine to rent out this property of hers at $1,200. And I am not renting it right now. I am renting it in future. So I am getting into a contract to rent a place from Catherine in the month of June so that's in future at $1200 so I'm renting it in future at the price that I have already this we have already frozen so it is pre-decided price and a future date. Okay. Now 
let's say the london mar london real estate market is volatile and in case 1 the rent of similar properties in the month of july in the month of june in london goes to 1500 dollars so what is happening the entire world is renting a place in london at 1500 dollars and i am able to rent that place from Catherine due to the contract that I had at $1,200. So entire world is renting at $1,500. I can rent at $1,200. So what will happen? So let's say Harry receives a profit of $300 and Catherine, what will happen to Catherine? Catherine can rent this property outside at a price of $1,500 to any other guy but she has to rent it to me at $1,200 because she is into a contract now. So Catherine will receive a loss of $300. Case 2 if the property rent goes to $1,000 then if I go to someone else other than Catherine I can rent it at $1,000 but due to this contract I would have to start paying Catherine a price of twelve hundred dollars so I am in Harry is in a loss of two hundred and similarly Catherine would be in profit of two hundred okay so there are two parties involved in a derivative contract one benefits from the price rise so I am benefiting from the price rise because I can buy lower than the market and one benefits from the price ball price fall because the person can sell at a price higher than the market okay so derivative is a contract or forwards are a contract between two parties in which one party agrees to buy and another party agrees to sell at a predetermined price on a future date. Now in this type of a contract buyer would benefit if the price goes up so he makes a profit. and he makes a loss if the price goes down seller of the contract makes a profit if the price goes down and he makes a loss if the price goes up so this is a forward contract now forward contracts can be on any asset it can be on a piece of property it can be on some commodity it can be on some future delivery of payments it can be on currency it can be on stocks it can be on weather right so imagination is the only restriction while creating forwards okay but the drawback of forwards are they are not traded on exchange they are constructed by two parties and a dealer so they have a counterparty risk counterparty risk means if you are in profit the other person is in loss because there forwards are a zero-sum contract profit to one party loss to another profit to you loss to Catherine profit to me or loss to me profit to Catherine okay so there are zero-sum contracts so if you are in profit the other person is in loss and he may deny to pay that so there is a counterparty risk involved in forwards futures are same like forwards futures are there on the index they are there on stocks they are there on currency pairs recently futures were launched on bitcoins so cryptocurrency so there are futures that are traded on these assets and many more the working is same there is buyer of future and there is seller of future buyer benefits when the price goes up and makes a loss when price goes down 
seller benefits when price goes up when price goes down and makes a loss when price goes up okay we are going to see the working of these futures with examples in future classes in a different module but it is not a part of equity and portfolio so i'm not going into much details i'm just giving you an overview so if you want to attend some of our some of our derivative modules you can do so we'll be soon having videos on derivatives in a very detailed fashion with examples and with trading concepts so you can subscribe to our channel to stay in touch with that so two parties buyer and seller up and down profit and loss okay Futures same as forwards except they are exchange traded so no counterparty risk and they are standardized. So most of the forward contracts are customized contracts so between two parties according to custom needs that the two parties have but futures are standardized according to certain exchange guidelines. Okay. Next is options. So options are one-sided contract it means in futures and forwards you have obligations as well as you have rights but in options the rights and obligations are separated so there is buyer of option contract and there is writer of option contract also colloquially known as seller on the street buyer of the contract gets right to buy or sell right to buy in call option and right to sell in put option right writer of a call gets obligation to sell and writer of a put gets obligation to buy call option since you have right to buy and if the price goes up you can buy lower than the market so call option makes money when profit goes up when the price of the underlying goes up it loses money if price remains same or it goes down so this is profit this is loss this is loss okay why do you make loss when the price remains same because buyer pays premium to writer so to get rights to do something you have to pay premiums and premium once paid is never returned back to you so that is the reason why when the price remains same you make losses now put option if price goes down you would be able to sell at a higher price than market so you make a profit if price remains same you make a loss if price goes up you still make a loss but the fun part about option is lost is restricted to the amount of premium paid so in futures loss can be pretty large but in options loss is restricted to the amount of premium paid because there is no obligation on you to buy or sell you just have right to buy and sell so that is why the loss in an option contract is for a buyer is restricted to the amount of premium paid okay so once again options have two parties to it buyers and writers buyers get right to buy in a call option right to sell in a put option writers get obligation to sell in a call option and obligation to buy in a put option but the obligation is contingent on whether the buyer wants to exercise his right if a call option price goes up you make profit if price remains same or goes down you make a loss input option if price goes down you make profit if price remains same or goes up you make a loss if you want to know detailed about options and futures stay in tune subscribe to our channel we will be soon uploading an entire series of videos on derivatives